Hello internet friends, this is Tim Schrock from Design Build Solutions bringing you today's Tech Tip Tuesday. I, this is going to be a kind of an interesting one. I'm, I worked on a pole barn structure uh, building last week and, and finished it up yesterday for a client. And I wanted to show you a few of the um, tricks and, and unique things that I had to do uh, to create this uh, structure. First of all, uh, to start off with, I've got the sketches from the field that uh, the contractor drew up here. You can see the poles, uh, four rows, or uh, four columns, three rows here, and I wanted to, to go into this view here. Each of these items here um, in the in the pole barn structure I've drawn. So what I did was I created layers for the beams, which is here, here, uh, the posts, here, and here, and the, and the intermediate post. And then I created a, a, another layer. Uh, well, this is this is a layer called posts. These are layers called beams. There's a layer I called purlins. I don't remember what bracing. I think I called this bracing here. So I did did the bracing here, here, etc. Purlins were across here. Um, so let's go into the elevation that that sketch represents. So I took my elevation here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this split screen. So you can see how it how it um, correlates. Of course, all the dimensions then are, are pretty obvious. Um, once I figured out the line of the uh, of the roof, the slope here. Um, they they estimated five and three quarters pitch in twelve um, twenty five point five degrees. I actually found that was according to the numbers for to the ridge etc was was about six and twelve pitch. But that's that's a minor uh, really no brainer um, number there. You can figure that out for your situation. Um, so here as I said was. And when I select this beam, I, I created this poly, this um, layer called CAD beam. Uh, this is CAD post down. This here is CAD purlins. And yes, CAD bracing. So I've got these these items here. Um, and, and you can name them whatever you want. You could have them all in one name if you like, but I like to kind of break them up so that I can turn them off, on and off if I want to down the road. Um, then I created this brace, this uh, piece up here that's not, you just see outlined um, like this. Again, this is a polyline solid. All of these are polyline solids, so you don't get the cool X in the uh, like a framing member would do. That would be cool if we could if we could do that with framing members and get the X like we do with automatic framing. But anyway, um, so from there, I copied that down to each row here, each column line. Uh, here's that you can see. I must have a layer turned locked. Um, this. And this are the are these beams right here under the rafters. Now I went ahead and I made my rafters. They are um, they weren't measured so by the pictures I estimated them to be three by six or four by six rafters at thirty inches on center. So I just changed the structure of the of the um, roof objects. if you will, and I went to structure 30 inches on center. The structure is six inches deep and three inches wide for the rafters. And then the ridge is a two by eight, two inch by eight inch. Let's take a quick um, dollhouse view of this. 
and you'll see how that then works out here in three dimensions. By drawing, drawing these beams here, and I, I gave these to um, their own layer called CAD roof beam. You could call it framing roof beam. What you know, it doesn't matter what you name the layer per se. Just as long as you know what you're thinking and can recall it. Um, so then here I can turn on, uh, go into framing roof rafters. And you get the whole sense of it. In a bit, I'll take. We'll go inside as well. But I wanted to show you the other thing I did here, because it's not a typical two by four, two by six wall construction. It's a post and beam with just a skin, really, if you will, on it, um, and then and then siding outside. I changed the wall type. To basically the two layers, the, this layer here is, I can't delete anyway, the, this one interior layer, but I changed um, my main layer to a three quarter inch oak plank uh, vertical um, boards, and then the exterior layer is the half inch, whatever thickness you want to give it, the half inch um, siding, so that when I'm looking at the interior here, it gives a better, better feeling of what is actually in the in the existing conditions. Um, so, across the purlins is nailed our our wide plank um, substrate, if you will, uh, vertical substrate on the walls, to which then is applied the uh, siding. So you can, you can take some pretty unique and um, off the beaten path um, framing methods, structures, and, and still model it pro properly, appropriately in Chief Architect. Um, I think I did the same with the roof system here. We go to structure. Uh, room ceiling finish. Let's go to s structure here. The ceiling finish. I removed all all layers here. So there's zero zero inches for that ceiling finish. And that way you see the you see the rafters exposed. Um, let's go back into materials here. And so for the roof. Um, hmm. surface there we go I had to I could not paint this with my with my uh, materials painter I had to go into the roof surface definition and um, under the asphalt roofing, I put my plank, my oak plank uh, material to show the boards that, that are my um, substrate on top of the roof rafters. Instead of OSB, which is a, a default in Chief Architect, I went back to change this to the oak plank here. Working with the tools, knowing, understanding what the tools are and the layers of, of the layers as far as layer names uh, for objects, as well as the layers of the of the um, uh, assemblies, if you will, like the wall assemblies and the roof assemblies and the floor assemblies, really helps to understand what you're going to do and how you're going to make it work within what you want to do. Um, I try to use as much of the default as I can, so like I didn't have to create um, the rafters, I just used the structure tab of the, of the roof 
uh, objects and told it what I wanted it to be. I removed the ceiling, right? I removed the ceiling in this in the room structure. Um, no, I did do flat ceiling. That's interesting. Okay. If I have a flat ceiling, there's a zero ceiling finish. That's that must have been what I did. Flat ceiling with zero ceiling finish. Um, either way, it doesn't doesn't matter because it still it still works even with the. Uh, with the flat ceiling. Now if I did uncheck this flat ceiling and had a ceiling finish here, that that ceiling finish would show up underneath the rafters. And so that's important to, uh, it's very important, critical to, to make that zero, delete the layers of the ceiling. There. Um, I know I didn't quite like do this in front of you, uh, today it's already done, but uh, as I talk through it, I hope that you've gained some information and, and some um, just understanding of how to approach your projects. Yours may be a little, maybe unique even than this one, um, have your own unique situation that you're trying to model. Um, but now it's, now I will say that the, um, then the thing that you have to think of is, when you're taking camera views because you just created sections and not or polyline solids and not framing members you could use framing members certainly you could use a framing member and create these purlins um, say you wanted to use a ceiling joist member and you you tell it exactly what height and width and thickness you want it to be and you could put it on its own layer if you like um, instead of doing the polyline solids. Now the angled ones, you have to do polyline solids. I, I don't know of a way that would, I'd be curious if you know of a way to do these angled pieces, say with a with a framing member, um, uh, that would be that would be pretty cool. But uh, I chose to use polyline solids for all of them. The thing to think about is when you're cutting a section, then you have to manually draw in the boxes, the X's to show, if you want to show that uh, like like this, like this floor beam, like this rafter beam, like this top beam here, etc. This is Tim Schrock with Tech Tip Tuesday using Chief Architect Premier X10. I hope this has been helpful. If you've liked or gained some new knowledge uh, in this video, I would appreciate the encouragement of a thumbs up. As always, leave a comment if you have questions or thoughts or ideas for um, Tech Tip Tuesday videos in the upcoming weeks. I'd love to hear, hear that from you. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and you'll get information, uh, you'll get notified of these videos each week as I release them. And as always, check out my website, www.designbuildsolutionsllc.com and see how I can help you, whether you're a homeowner or a designer or a contractor uh, with services just like this. If you're a designer, I can help you uh, understand and uh, do some training in Chief Architect as well. Now, have a good week.